Hello, and welcome to another episode of Five Things, a web series dedicated to answering the five burning tech questions that you have about technologies and workflows in the media creation space, plus tech stuff I dig and how it's used. I'm your host, Michael Thomas, and before we get started on building a Roku channel, a big thanks to all who came out to the Avid and Keycode Media Ask Avid event. We had five top people from Avid demoing new tech and having the guts to take live Q&A from a live audience and from social media. Plus, everyone who came out last week to the Seattle Production Live Expo, where I did a live Five Things episode on live streaming. Lastly, a huge shout out to everyone who stopped by and chatted at the NAB East Coast Convention in New York last week. Geeks, tech, and fun. Thanks to all of you. I love this stuff. And now, without further ado, let's get started with building a Roku channel. When I cut the cord a few years ago, I still needed to find a way to enjoy video media without simply relying on Netflix and YouTube. And buying many of these subscription-based apps like HBO Go would simply jack up my monthly charge, which is why I canceled cable in the first place. I looked at all of the OTT options out there, including Apple TV, Fire TV, and various gaming consoles. Roku caught my eye as an inexpensive way to find and consume content, as it had thousands of public and private channels, many more than others, and already had a wide viewership. In fact, as of June this year, nearly 40 million Americans use their Roku at least once a month. It's the number one OTT platform out there. Roku has also just gone public, which means the company is going to accelerate even more quickly. While I was thrilled with the amount of content I had easy access to with Roku, it wasn't long before I wanted to get on the bandwagon and create my own channel for five things. The Roku channel paradigm is pretty simple. A channel is much like an EDL. It simply points to where the media is externally and streams it when it's told to play. So channels are traditionally lightweight, as they only contain a few images, and code to link to your media which is sitting elsewhere. Now this seemed pretty simple enough. However, when I started to create my own channel, there were only two ways to do it yourself. First was to use a site like instanttvchannel.com, which is a cloud-based Roku channel production system. Through a series of drop-downs and prompts, you could create your very own Roku channel. The problem I had was that you had to pay per month as long as the channel was active, anywhere from $5 to $50 or more per month, and your account may have an instant TV splash screen on launch, amongst other gotchas. The second way was to develop against the Roku Software Development Kit, or SDK. Programming for a Roku channel is based around the BrightScript coding language, which is a bit like JavaScript mixed with Visual Basic. It took about 100 hours of work and the purchase of an old SD Roku model for testing on legacy gear to get my first channel up and running. And then there was the updates. Several hours per month after each new episode of Five Things and creating and testing versions for SD and HD Roku models. But you fine folks are in luck. Last year, Roku introduced a third way known as Direct Publisher, which gave novice creators the ability to create a channel without writing a single line of code and have it work across most modern Roku players. Hallelujah! And thus, how to create a channel with Direct Publisher is what I'll show you today. Since Direct Publisher is from Roku, you need to start off by creating an account with Roku. If you already have a Roku unit, then you probably already have an account. So sign in. Navigate to the developer homepage and under My Channels, you'll want to click Manage My Channels. And then click Add Channel. As you can see, we have the aforementioned Developer SDK and Direct Publisher methods. You'll want to select Direct Publisher and give it a descriptive name and click Continue. Next, you'll be prompted for a few various options. Where in the world your channel will be available, what language the channel is in, if your channel is intended for children or adults, and a channel vanity code. The vanity code you can pass to potential subscribers so they don't need to search the store for your channel. Give them the vanity code and they can enter it into their Roku account to immediately get to your channel. Next, you're presented with your feed URL. This is where you may want to pause and watch the rest of this episode because you'll need to determine your feed URL via other methods. Feel free to jump to how do I update my channel for this information and then come back. 
I'm going to cut and paste my feed URL and now tell Roku what format my videos are in. I'll explore the various media types later in this episode. However, I'm going to select specified in feed so I can dynamically change the media type at any point in time. Next, we're at the branding page, and this is where you'll upload custom graphics for your channel. It's important to adhere to the graphic specs or the page layout won't look right. Roku will automatically make all of your graphics work on SD, HD, and UHD models of Roku, so don't worry about creating various versions and resolutions. You can also choose your branding colors to complement your individual style. One thing to remember is that while Direct Publisher makes things easy to get started, it does somewhat limit the layout of your channel. That's the trade-off. If you want total control over your layout, then you'll need to build your channel from the Roku SDK. Next, we need to define categories. Since we're going to define the categories in our feed, we'll select From Feed. Now we need to enter our all-important metadata, channel name, its description, web description, your channel's category, and the uber-important keywords. Plus, you'll add a channel poster image. On the next screen, are you making money off this thing? Most likely, when you're starting out, the answer is no, so select as such. Next, upload a screenshot. Roku can auto-generate this if your feed URL is ready. If not, upload a 19x20x1080 by by JPEG or PNG file. We're now at support information, where you need to enter how Roku can get in touch with you, but also, where do you want to drive viewers to to get in contact with you or see more about your channel and your projects? Click Continue, and you'll see a summary of your channel so far. There are icons next to each section you filled out, so you can see where you may have goofed. Often, you'll see problems next to feed status. Not all errors are showstoppers, and many of the errors you may encounter are easily found in the Direct Publisher Roku forum. Once things are good, click the link towards the top of the page. Sure your channel gets published to your account. This is not public just yet. It's just pushed to your Roku account so you can beta test. Click Add the Channel. Now, move to your Roku unit, and you'll want to navigate to Settings, System, System Update. This will have Roku not only look for updates to your channel software, but also add any channels. Once the Roku unit is updated, you can open the channel and start testing. Boom! You now have the framework for your first Roku channel. Now we need to add some content. If you're going to promote yourself on Roku, you need content, right? One immediate issue that many novice developers encounter is that any Roku channel you create cannot link to YouTube videos, which of course is a popular place to house your media. Doing so violates the Roku and YouTube terms of service, and Roku has been cracking down on channels doing these sorts of things. Plus, YouTube doesn't offer direct links publicly to their media anyway. You can, however, use a Vimeo Pro account, as they offer up direct MP4 links to your media. That being said, using a single self-contained MP4, M4V, or MOV for that matter, can be problematic. It's very difficult to create a single file that works well for streaming to every device, given bandwidth and resolution restrictions. Now, more advanced streaming formats that include segmented files at various quality levels, otherwise known as adaptive streaming, are preferred over standalone files. The end player can decide what version will play smoothly, given the available bandwidth at any point in time, so you get the highest quality file possible with no buffering errors. Microsoft Smooth Streaming, MPEG Dash, and Apple HLS all follow this basic methodology. Of these three options that Roku supports, I chose Apple HLS, mainly due to the fact that a majority of my audience uses Apple devices, and HLS is fully supported on iOS systems. You need to host this on a cloud provider or on your own website. I chose to use my existing Amazon S3 bucket, but as you'll see later, you may want to host it on your own website. What the fuck is the internet? The internet is a communications tool used the world over where people can come together to bitch about movies and share pornography with one another. As a side note, be sure to compare the cost of CDN hosting on Amazon versus how much traffic you can have on your website. Some web hosts may bill you for traffic overages, and hosting all of your media on your website may push you over the edge. This is exactly why I use Amazon S3. If you hadn't noticed, I caption all of my episodes. Roku accepts SRT caption files, as well as media with embedded captions. 
I'm also a huge fan of BIF files, or base index frame files. These are graphic thumbnails that the user sees while we're winding and fast forwarding through each episode. It's a visual indicator of where the user is, not just a timestamp. I use BIF Video File Creator, now free for Windows, to create the BIF files from my final video edit. I also upload these files to my Amazon S3 account. Lastly, I create a thumbnail of my episode, much like you do for YouTube. In fact, I now use the exact same thumbnail I create for YouTube as Direct Publisher will automatically size it for older SD players, something that the old SDK method couldn't do. A key to the success of your channel is updating it with content. Otherwise, why would people install your channel? Roku's Direct Publisher takes updates in two ways, via an MRSS feed or via JSON. Now, you're probably saying, Michael, you said there was no coding. There isn't. Many online apps or website templates can generate MRSS feeds of a blog post. However, JSON offers a deeper level of integration, and there are apps and website plugins that communicate to the Roku mothership via JSON. Now, if you use WordPress as your website CDN, then you're aware of all the plugins to give your site additional functionality. Recently, a plugin became available called WP Smart TV by Rovidex Media. This plugin can use your WordPress site to house all of your media for your Roku channel and can push all of the updates to your Roku channel via JSON. No coding! For me, this was an instant workflow savior. It saved me hours of time per month in coding, testing, and manually creating artwork. Plus, it centralized my data and media. Let me show you how it works. Log into your WordPress installation and click on Plugins and Add New. In the keyword search box, type WP Smart TV. Once the plugin shows up, click Install Now. Once installed, click Activate. You may also want to install the Jetpack plugin, which is a plugin that speeds up image loading. It can also fix the error messages on the Roku developer portal where Roku cannot load thumbnails. Some WordPress hosts block loading images to Roku, and this gets around it. On the left-hand side of your screen, you'll now see a heading for WP Smart TV. Click it. You now will see the options for your Roku JSON feed. Under General Settings, you can select your type of post you're making that best coincide with your content. Click Save. Under Roku settings, you have options to limit the amount of posts that show up on the channel per category, as well as settings for any advertisements you may have. I highly recommend reading the documentation on recipes, so you have more granular control over the order in which your categories show up on your channel. Note the URL at the top of this section. This is important. This is the feed URL that you will cut and paste into the feed URL prompt we covered earlier in the episode. This is how WordPress, WP Smart TV, and your Roku channel talk to one another. Click Save. WP Smart TV also supports other OTT devices like Fire TV. For Roku, we can skip over this. We also skip over the video JS settings as we're not monetizing this channel in this demo. Lastly is the Help Documents tab, which I highly recommend reading. In order for WP Smart TV to add content to your feed, you'll need to create a video post. On the left side of your screen is a heading called My Videos. Click it. From here, you'll want to add a new video. Immediately, you'll see the options for your Roku Media. You'll need a new video post for every video file you want on your feed. I know, if you have a large catalog of videos, this may be tedious, but it's certainly much better than coding. Put in your duration, your video format, your video quality, and the location of your media, as we talked about in the How Do I Create Media for Roku section, and add the media URL here. Add closed captions if you have them, and their language and type. Currently, VTT is accepted, so I convert my master SRT files to VTT with any number of free web-based tools. This is the only tab and field that is optional. Trick play is used for the BIF files, which we covered earlier. Now, click Genres to further categorize your media, be sure to upload a featured image for your post, as this is the thumbnail for the video post. I usually use my YouTube thumbnail. Also, enter a description at the top so viewers know what the episode is, well, about. Click Publish. 
Congratulations, you now have the first video on your Roku channel. Every time you make a change to your Roku channel, you need to go back to your Roku developer page and refresh the feed. This is only temporary. Once your channel is published and made public, the updating will occur automatically. First, you need to buy a Roku player. You gotta know how the thing actually works, so you know how to design your channel. You also need to test your channel. As of now, there isn't a way to 100% test your channel via SDK, via a third-party website, or by direct publisher without one. So check out the current models and see which one works for you. Also, this ain't Field of Dreams. If you build it, he will come. Okay, you must have heard that! Just because you build it doesn't mean people will flock to it. So you need to promote it. This includes Roku themed channel sites, as well as on Roku user forums, plus on your other sites, like YouTube, Vimeo, and other social media channels. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Direct Publisher does have a framework for ads, so you can conceivably make money off of your channel. But if you're not making much on YouTube, do you really expect to make more on Roku? Roku is big, but not YouTube big. It's cool, that's what it's got going for. Yeah, you don't want to ruin it with ads because ads aren't cool. Exactly. To be clear, I don't recommend Roku as your sole point of distribution. But in the huge marketplace reality, where there's competition for eyeballs everywhere, branching out into a realm that has less than, let's say, YouTube, means you have another audience to engage with. And 40 million eyeballs per month ain't bad. Have more Roku concerns other than just these five questions? Ask me in the comments section. Also, please subscribe and share this tech goodness with the rest of your techie friends. Acronyms like OTT should surely excite them. Be sure to check out more episodes of Five Things and all of the other great learning content at moviola.com. Until the next episode, learn more, do more. Thanks for watching.